and welcome to Scobuff Sports. I'm your host, Jimmy Searfoss. And I'm your host, James Burley. And you know what? Just for today, I think it's time that we bust out my old name. See, I was originally named James. I think just for this, oh. I think we just roll with the James show. I love it. I love it. James and James. James and James. It flows so well, it's only natural. They only give that name to the most handsome. Of though. course. Absolutely. <laughs> Men's basketball team took to Las Vegas for the Pac-12 tournament after wrapping up their regular season Saturday. Colorado faced Washington in the first round and defeated the Huskies to advance to the second, where they lined up against top-seeded UCLA. Let's go to Scobuff sports reporter Sidney Pulitzer, who's in Vegas covering the Buffs. Sidney, fill us in on how the Buffs fared in that second round. Jimmy, James, the Buffs definitely gave the best team in the Pac-12 conference a run for their money. Unfortunately, they just couldn't get the job done. So you put up a fight against the Bruins, but saw their run in the Pac-12 conference tournament come to an end as the number two ranked UCLA topped the Buffs 80 to 69 here at the T-Mobile Arena. The Buffaloes struggled to keep their composure in the second half after getting to some pretty early foul trouble with Nick Clifford and also Tad Boyle getting himself thrown out in the last two minutes of the game. We did see some pretty great efforts by some of the bench players such as Ethan Wright who contributed 10 points for the Colorado Buffaloes, but it was not enough for them to keep playing in this tournament. We will be continuing to provide coverage for the rest of this tournament, so stay tuned. In the meantime, I'm Sydney Pulitzer. Back to you guys at the desk. 12 team was announced this week and they featured two Colorado Buffaloes. Our own Tristan De Silva made the first team and KJ Simpson made the second. The pair were one and two in scoring for the Buffaloes and played a major role in the offense this season. They, along with the entire basketball team, are hoping to extend their season with an invitation to the NIT. They will know on Sunday when the selection show takes place. Scobuff Sports also sent three reporters to the Pac-12 Women's Basketball Tournament last week. Let's go to Megan McPherson, who is in Vegas covering the Buffs for a full recap. What a season thus far for the CU women's basketball team. After the Oregon State Beavers won their first round matchup, the first game was set and CU faced off against the Beavers in the second round of the Pac-12 tournament. The Beavs, who upset USC to make it to that game, certainly gave Colorado a run for their money in the first half. The Beavs led 2015 over the Buffs at one point, and let me tell you, the Beavs were hot from the three-point arc all game long. They were 4 of 5 from three-point range in the first quarter, 6 of 7 in the second. A strong finish towards the end of the second half helped the Buffs close that gap and tie things up heading into the break. Frida Foreman was a big part of that with 10 points for CU heading into halftime. They maintained a nice lead throughout the third, going on a 15-2 run. The top two scorers in the quarterfinal round for the Buffs, Frida Foreman and freshman Arnett Von Ley. Foreman put up 16 points, making several free throws and sinking a few threes to lead the way for CU's offense. Von Ley was just under that with 15 points on the night, and she'll continue to be a major part of both CU's offense and defense heading into NCAA tournament play. With that quarterfinal win, the Colorado Buffaloes advanced to the semifinals against the Washington State Cougars. Washington State dominated early on when they went on a 9-2 run, giving them a lead that they never gave up from that point on. Von Ley put up back-to-back -back buckets in an attempt to bring Colorado within reach, but it wasn't enough. The Cougars had yet another large scoring run, giving them a 14-point edge. Von Ley sunk two buckets, which slimmed the margin, and at the end of the half, Colorado trailed 27-16. The Buffs found their rhythm quickly after halftime into the third, putting up a 24 run, which ultimately tied the game 38-38. Colorado outscored the Cougars 2-1 and came back from their largest deficit of the game, 16 points. The Buffs tied with Wazoo four minutes into the fourth until Ula Martuga sunk a three. The Cougs controlled the entirety of the quarter, holding Colorado outside the arc while establishing themselves within the paint. Wazoo put up nine unanswered, which punched their ticket into the Pac-12 finals. Although a heartbreaking exit, Jalen Sherrod recorded her 1,000th career point, off of a free throw in the third quarter. Colorado saw three double-digit scorers in the stat sheet. Arnett Von Ley led the team with 18 points. Sherrod followed closely behind with 13 points. And Foreman was the final buff with 11 points. None of the four teams that entered the tournament with a bye, including Colorado, made it to the finals. 
showing just how competitive the Pac-12 conference truly is when it comes to women's basketball. And Wazoo ultimately took home the title. Though Colorado did not advance to the Pac-12 tournament finals, the Buffs now wait to see where they are placed in the 64-team bracket on Selection Sunday. The CU women currently project as a number five seed in most mock brackets, but that could change with other results coming in this week. Regardless, it will be a second consecutive attorney appearance for J.R. Payne and the Buffs, who are hoping to pick up a win this time after bowing out in the first round last year. Troy Finnegan with Buff Banter after the break. Welcome back, Buff fans. I'm Troy Finnegan, and I am back with another edition of Buff Banner. Now, we know the CU women's hoop squad is having a banner season this year, and their impressive resume has them in contention for a top four seed in the upcoming NCAA tournament. On the women's side, a top four seed means you get to host the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament at home. This would prove especially crucial for a CU squad that is 12-2 at home this year. So, what are the chances that we get to see the Buffs play in Boulder again this year? Well, the chances are not great, to be honest, but the Buffs certainly have a convincing case for the tourney to come to the keg. The Buffs finished strong at 23-8 while placing third in the regular season in arguably the best league in the country, one that boasts seven, maybe eight tournament teams. The Buffs suffered no bad losses, and their only loss against the non-NCAA tournament team all season came all the way back in November in a one-point overtime loss in Lubbock against Texas Tech. In addition, CU racked up wins over Utah, Arizona, and UCLA during the conference slate, and ranked top 25 in the country in both net ranking and strength of schedule. These buffs are battle-tested and have proven time and again that they are a force to be reckoned with. The buffs have some stiff competition to get into the overall top 16, and their Pac-12 semifinal loss against Washington State ultimately might cost them that spot. Both the Cougars and UCLA, the other conference finalist, have strong cases, along with other teams across the country like Tennessee, Villanova, Texas, and Oklahoma who are competing for those final host spots. Ultimately, it'll be up to the selection committee to decide the Buffs' fate when the women's bracket is revealed on Sunday at 6 p.m. I'm a firm believer that they should be playing at home, but no matter where they fall, they've proven that they're ready to make a run. I'm Troy Finnegan, back to you guys at the desk. A Colorado football commit, Anthony Deuce Robertson II, allegedly has a long history of sexual misconduct, according to a story published by The Bold and the CU Independent on Wednesday. The allegations go all the way back to Robertson's time at Palmer Ridge High School in Monument, Colorado, and span through his time at Snow College, a junior college in Utah. Robertson is currently away from the team, and the university has not commented on the report. You can read the full story at theboldcu.com. The football team is getting ready to get started with their spring practices next week. They've been doing their winter conditioning this offseason, but now are getting ready to strap on the pads and get to work on the field next Sunday, March 19th. The team is working towards the highly anticipated spring game that's taking place on April 22nd as they gear up for the upcoming season. The women's D1 lacrosse team is still searching for their first victory of the season uh, of the year, as this past Friday, the Buffs fell to Michigan 12-5 at Kittredge Field. This was the first time this season that senior Charlie Rudy did not notch, notch a hat trick. She scored only twice in this game. Sam McGee also scored two goals in the loss. The Buffaloes continue their search for their first win this weekend as they hit the road to visit Ohio State. The Ohio State-Colorado matchup will take place on March 12th at 10 a.m. The game will be available to watch on Big Ten Plus. The men's club lacrosse team is off to a solid start this season despite losses to both ranked opponents Liberty and Virginia Tech. However, they did manage to bounce back against Texas A&M in their return to Boulder this past Saturday. Alan Baghetti has, their, has the recap. He was there. Hi, I'm Alan Baghetti with Sco Buff Sports here at Kid Ridge Field after the Colorado Buffaloes beat the Texas A&M Aggies 7-3. The game started off pretty quick with Colorado scoring two goals within the first four or five minutes of the game. 
Soon, that lead would turn into six when the score was seven to one. The Aggies came back and scored two more goals, leaving the final score to seven to three, but it was too little, too late for the Texas A&M Aggies. I'm Alan Pugetti for Scobuff Sports, and remember, you heard it here first. Poll has the Buffs at number 20 in the country, just behind in-state rivals Colorado State. They return to action on Thursday at 7 p.m. against New Hampshire. You can catch all the action live here on our YouTube channel. The historic CU Boulder vs. CSU rivalry continued as the women's club lacrosse team took on the Rams at Kittredge Field last weekend. While it was an extremely close game, the Buffs were able to take home the 13-8 win. Star player of the game, Amberly Peterson, scored three goals and had two assists. Now our number seven ranked Buffs are set to play number two ranked BYU this Saturday at 4 p.m. It should be a good one. Don't you go anywhere. We still got stories from golf, skiing, tennis, and track, plus our trivia question. Stick around. <laughs> Go Buffs! Go Buffs! <laughs> Thank you. The women's golf team finished in 12th place out of 13 teams last week at the Julie Inkster Invitational. Finishing with an overall score of 38 over par. Stanford won the event with the score of 600 par, and the buffs were led by sophomore Lauren Gooding and freshman Morgan Miller, who both finished or finished 6 and 7 over par. CU now gets some time off before their season continues on March 24th at the Ping Invitational in Phoenix. The men's golf team took third place in the Wyoming Desert Intercollegiate event last week after they came back on the final day to overtake Utah. Sophomore Dylan McDermott led the Buffs at the tournament and was named Pac-12 Golfer of the Week. The Colorado Ski Team has moved one step closer towards the 21st NCAA National Championship. The 70th annual contest kicked off this Wednesday in Lake Placid, New York, and the Buffs got off to an extremely hot start. Philip Foryatek became just the third skier in NCAA men's history to repeat as the giant slalom champion and the first for CU, edging out his teammate opponent, Luis Fauza, who finished in second on Thursday. Both the men's and women's team continued to hold control, and with the help of Anna Marie Deitz, who finished in third place in the women's 5K race, at the halfway point, Colorado leads with 297, 279 and a half points, and they have tallied seven All-American honors thus far. The Buffs will look to continue the momentum as action returns this afternoon with the men's and women's slalom races. The tennis team had a rough weekend as they fell to 7-5 on the season and 0-2 in Pac-12 play. On Friday, the team lost 6-1 to, to 13th ranked Stanford. Then, on Sunday, the Buffs lost a close match against California. The girls are looking to get a win against Wyoming this weekend. The match is at 10 a.m. on Sunday at the CU Tennis Complex. This weekend is the NCAA Track and Field Indoor Championships where we have where the three buffs are attending. Ella Baran will be competing in the women's 5,000 meter run, Avery McMullen will be running in the pentathlon, and freshman Isaiah Gibbons will be racing in the mile. These three will earn All-American status when their races start, and if they finish in the top eight of their races, they will be earned, they'll be earning first team All-American honors. Good luck to our buffs this weekend. And now it's time for our trivia question. Buffs fans, we want to know, including yesterday, how many times has Tad Boyle been ejected in his career as the Colorado head coach? Stay tuned for the answer. Coming up later in the show, after the break, Harrison Simeon has this week's edition of Rapid Fire. Who's the biggest Buffs fan here? Me! That guy, that guy, that guy, that guy. Um, Scuba. Go Buffs, baby! Go about the Buffs! Go Buffs! What's up, y'all? I'm Harrison Simeon, and it's time for Rapid Fire. 
The ski team is competing today and Saturday at slalom events and the 20K Classical up in Lake Placid, New York for the NCAA Championships, while track and field looks to outpace the competition at their own NCAA Indoor Championships down in Albuquerque, New Mexico, both today and tomorrow as well. On Sunday morning, Wyoming comes to town to take on the tennis team, while the women's lacrosse squad looks to get their season back on track on the road against the Ohio State Buckeyes. Well, that's all I got for now. Pretty rapid, right? I'm Harrison Simeon, singing it back to y'all at the desk. Thanks, Harrison. Now it is time to answer our trivia question. We asked you, how many times has Tad Boyle been ejected from a game as the Buffs head coach, including yesterday? And the answer is, once. <laughs> Yesterday was the very first time he had been tossed as the head man here at CU. And after such a frustrating year, maybe he just wanted to get a little head start on the offseason. I don't, I don't blame him at all. And now it's time for our Tweet of the Week featuring the one and only Coach Prime. On Tuesday, he shared a video of a few members of the team squatting quite the heavy weight. It's great to see the team building some much needed chemistry as they show some excitement for their teammates. It'll be exciting to see this strength translate to the field. You know, I think if you give me a forklift, I could lift that just as well as they did. Yeah, no, I, I trust you. I trust <laughs> you on that one. <laughs> well, thank you guys for watching this show this week. I've been your host, Jimmy, James oh. Searfoss. <laughs> and I'm your host, James Burley. Remember, you heard it here first.